Hot Blob Beneath America Mysterious Hot Blob Beneath Eastern US is slowly crawling toward New York, baffling scientists. In a discovery that sounds like it belongs in a science fiction thriller, UK scientists have identified a massive slowly moving hot blob of molten rock beneath the eastern United States and it's inching its way toward New York City. It's time to dig into this one. Let's break it down on the AI podcast. Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine a massive molten blob hidden deep underground and it's slowly but surely moving towards a major city like New York. Mm. Sounds like science fiction, right? But believe it or not, this is real geology. It's unfolding right beneath our feet. It really is quite something. Today, we're taking a deep dive into what scientists are calling the Northern Appalachian Anomaly. We want to figure out what it is, where it might have come from, and uh, why it's got researchers absolutely baffled. Yeah, baffled is a good word for it. So our mission for you is to take the sources on this, well, bizarre discovery and really pull out the key insights so you understand the sort of slow motion epic happening beneath us. Absolutely. We'll look at its incredible size, how scientists even found it, and importantly, how it's making people rethink some long held geological ideas. And the implications. Yeah. They're pretty surprising. Exactly. We'll get into its effects on the Appalachian Mountains, maybe even touch on its uh, twin under Greenland. It really shows how these hidden forces shape our world. Con Constantly shaping it. So, to kick us off, what exactly is this subterranean enigma, the Northern Appalachian Anomaly or NDOA? Well, fundamentally, it's this huge, colossal mass of unusually hot rock deep beneath the Earth's surface. Okay, hot rock deep down. Yeah. And you said it's moving. That's the really wild part. It's currently under the Appalachians, but its trajectory seems to be, well, slowly inching towards New York City. Wow. And the scientific community, how are they reacting? Oh, they're amazed and, like you said, puzzled. I mean, it's fascinating how something this significant, geologically speaking, could remain, well, hidden or at least misunderstood for so long. It really makes you think about what else is down there. Definitely. So how did they find it or uh, figure out what it really was? It was actually UK-based scientists led by Professor Tom Gurnan from the University of Southampton. They used a technique called seismic tomography. Seismic tomography sounds complex. You can think of it like a massive SIA scan, but for the Earth's interior, it lets them map out these deep structures based on how seismic waves travel through them. Right, like seeing differences in density or temperature. Exactly. And what they saw was this huge anomaly. To give you a sense of scale, it's buried about 125 miles down. 125 miles? That's really deep. Oh, yeah. And it stretches an impressive 220 miles across the New England region. That makes it one of the biggest things like this ever seen under North America. Incredible. Now, you mentioned it's been puzzling geologists for a while. Professor Gurnan even said uh, this thermal upwelling has long been a puzzling feature. That's right. It wasn't entirely unknown that something warm was down there, but its nature and origin were the big questions. For decades, the main idea, the assumption really, was that it was just leftover heat. Leftover from what? From when North America split away from Africa, which happened around, oh, 180 million years ago. Yeah. It seemed logical, you know, residual heat from that massive rifting event. Okay, that makes some sense. Ancient heat sticking around. It did, on the surface. But yeah. then came this new study, the one in the journal Geology, and it really threw a wrench in the works. How so? What did it find? Well, it suggested the blob actually started forming much, much more recently, only about 80 million years ago. Not 180 million. 80 million versus 180 million. That's a huge difference in geological time, isn't it? Massive. And that's the core of the problem because the area it sits under, this part of the North American plate, has been tectonically quiet, stable for over 180 million years. So no major earthquakes or volcanoes or mountain building? Pretty much. It's considered a very old, very stable piece of crust. So the idea that this intense heat source was just sort of lingering energy from that ancient split, hmm. it just didn't really add up anymore, as Gernon put it. Right. The timeline doesn't fit if it's that much younger. It forces you to ask, well, where did it come from then if it's not just old leftover heat? Exactly. And that leads to the newer theory based on research published in Nature. The idea now is it's more dynamic. Dynamic. It suggests this superheated rock originating from much deeper, maybe just above the Earth's core, actually rose up. It exploited pre-existing weaknesses, like cracks in the crust formed by those much older rifting events you mentioned. So deep heat finding old pathways up. Kind of. 
And then this material, once it reaches the upper mantle and starts to cool a bit, it doesn't just sit there. It can become dense enough to sort of drip downwards. Drip, like a leaky faucet. Well, on a geological time scale, yeah. It sinks or drips down. And this process can create what they call mantle waves, these incredibly slow but powerful ripples that can move across the base of entire continents. Think of it like a very, very slow motion lava lamp effect deep inside the Earth. Wow. Okay, so it's an active process, not just passive cooling. And how did they track its movement? You said it's heading towards New York. Right. That wasn't just a guess. They used a combination of methods. Direct geological observations from the surface, sophisticated computer models of plate tectonics over millions of years, and these complex simulations of mantle flow. Putting all those pieces together? Exactly. And these models and simulations indicate it's currently migrating southwest. The estimated speed is about... Uh, 12 miles per million years. 12 miles per million years. Okay, so not exactly speeding. Not at all. Which is why, yes, based on that rate, it could theoretically end up under the New York City area in maybe 10 to 15 million years. So definitely reassuring for anyone listening in New York right now, no immediate danger. None whatsoever, unless you have very, very long-term plans. Okay, but maybe the most fascinating part for us now is how this deep blob is actually affecting the surface world. You mentioned the Appalachians. Yes, this is where it gets really compelling. It potentially solves another long-standing geological puzzle. Why are the Appalachian Mountains still so high? What do you mean? Aren't mountains just high? Well, yes, but mountains erode. And the Appalachians are ancient. They've been eroding massively for something like the last 20 million years. Geologically speaking, they should be much lower, much flatter by now. Ah, okay. So they're higher than expected given their age and erosion. Precisely. And Gernin's team thinks the heat rising from this NAA blob might be the reason. How would heat make mountains higher? The idea is that the heat essentially makes the base of the Earth's crust, the lithosphere, beneath the mountains less dense. It sort of lightens it. Like heating it up makes it expand, become less dense. Exactly. And if the crust becomes lighter, it becomes more buoyant. It floats higher on the underlying mantle. Gernon used a great analogy. What was that? He said, heat at the base of a continent can weaken and remove part of its dense root, making the continent lighter and more buoyant. Think of it like a hot air balloon suddenly shedding some weight, it rises higher. So the blob is acting like a burner under the crust, giving it extra lift. That's the hypothesis. And this uplift effect might continue as long as the blob is underneath. Once it moves on, eventually the crust would cool, become denser again, and settle back down. Then erosion would really take over and wear the mountains down. That's amazing. A hidden engine keeping mountains afloat almost. In a way, yeah. And there's another possible link. This blob might also help explain some rare, unusual volcanic activity in the region. Not major eruptions, but smaller ones. Some have even brought diamonds up to the surface. Diamonds? Seriously? From this deep heat? It's thought that the heat could trigger melting that leads to these specific kinds of small volume eruptions known sometimes for carrying diamonds. An unexpected side effect, you could say. Definitely unexpected. Okay, and then you mentioned it has a twin. Another one of these blobs. That's right. As if one wasn't enough. The research suggests there's a geological twin located beneath north central Greenland. Greenland. How is it linked? It seems to have formed during the very same ancient rifting event that influenced the NAA's origins, linked to the opening of the North Atlantic. Wow. So these things formed potentially thousands of miles apart, but from related processes. Exactly. And the Greenland one isn't just some ancient relic either. It has very current relevance. How so? Well, it sits beneath miles of ice. And the heat flow from this anomaly directly affects how the Greenland ice sheet melts and moves today. So understanding this deep geology is actually important for climate change modeling, for predicting ice melt. Absolutely. It's a prime example of how these ancient tectonic legacies, these deep earth processes, are still actively shaping critical aspects of our modern planet like ice sheet dynamics. It really connects the beat past to the present, doesn't it? So pulling this all together, what's the big takeaway for us? I think it's a powerful reminder, really, of how much is going on beneath our feet that we don't see. These hidden forces can profoundly influence the world we live on, from a height of mountains to the behavior of ice sheets. Things we take for granted on the surface have these deep, slow-moving drivers. Precisely. Gernon summed it up well again, saying something like, even though the surface shows little sign of ongoing tectonics, deep below, the consequences of ancient rifting are still playing out. So even in places that seem quiet and stable on the surface... The deep earth is still very much active. 
It highlights that our planet is constantly in motion, constantly evolving, even over vast timescales and in unexpected ways. Yeah. So this molten blob creeping towards New York, it's not some disaster movie plot. It's more like this slow motion geological epic unfolding over millions of years. Reshaping landscapes, challenging our understanding. And reminding us that the Earth is never truly still. So for you listening, hopefully this deep dive gives you a fascinating glimpse into just how dynamic our planet is. And maybe it leaves you wondering what other hidden forces are out there shaping our world right now, silently waiting to reveal their impact over the eons. Okay, one question for you. How does seismic tomography help scientists deter underground anomalies like this hot block? Don't forget to comment it. Thanks.